Greetings to everyone, greetings to the world. Welcome to the Biology Hub. So for today, we are going to do the ear as one of our receptors. Now, the ear is divided into three parts. It has got the, uh, the outer ear, which is air-filled, and then we have the middle ear, which is air-filled also. And then lastly, we have uh, the inner ear, which is fluid-filled. Um, now, the two air-filled parts of the ear, they play a role in hearing only. We know very well that our ears are responsible for hearing. And then, uh, the one which is fluid-filled, it contains the endolymph and the perilymph. And those fluids, they are responsible for both hearing and balance. So now, the question is, how does it have balance uh, tend to happen and then how does the hearing process occurs also yes we are familiar with it but let's go through the structure of the ear uh, together so now this is our ear from the outside we have the pina auditory canal and then the tympanic membrane all these three they make up our outer ear which is air filled remember and then Moving to the middle ear, we have the ossicles, the three tiny bones which are arranged from the the, sm uh, the largest to the smallest. And they are responsible for amplification of sound. They amplify, they amplify. So these bones are known as hammer and villain stirrup respectively from the largest to the smallest. And then they are attached to the oval window. And the, uh, on the line of the oval window, we have the round window which serves as an exit towards the eustachian tube. We have the eustachian tube here. And then we have the semicircular canals, which con contain the receptors maculae and the cristae. This is the ampulla, utriculus, and the circulars, as written here. And then we have uh, something which looks like a snail here. It's the cochlea. And here we have the organs of cochlea. They are responsible for converting uh, uh, the stimuli into nerve impulses, the uh, stimuli in the form of pressure waves. And then we have the auditory nerve. This one is responsible for transmitting nerve impulses from this ear to the brain. So now we're going to start with hearing, the hearing process to see how does it occur. So now first things first, the pina, pina will trap and direct sound into the uh, auditory canal. And the auditory canal will then send the sound waves to the tympanic membrane tympanic membrane and the tympanic membrane will vibrate as it vibrates it will cause the ossicles to vibrate thus the hammer anvil and the stirrup will vibrate remember they are attached to the oval window which means that the oval window will have to vibrate also and thus when it vibrates it will set up pressure waves in the cochlea and as it says the pressure waves in the cochlea, the organs of Koti in the cochlea will be stimulated to convert the pressure waves into nerve impulses. And the nerve impulses will be sent to the cerebrum via the auditory nerve for interpretation. And they will be interpreted as hearing. Of course, they, they would have been conveyed via the auditory nerve to the cerebrum. Remember, the cerebrum is the one which is responsible for receiving and interpreting all body sensations. So as part of hearing is one of the sensations. So we're going to make use of this mnemonic that we generated just now. Patuka. And then now we go to the balance, balance, balance. So for the balance, we have the two receptors in the semicircular canals, the crystal and the macula. So here you're going to make use of the MP. You're going to, for balance, you're going to make use of the MP plus the CDS. Just to remind yourself of the process of hearing. The M here is for macula. And the C here is for crystal. So now the question is, what stimulates the cristae and what stimulates the macula? Now, the macula will be stimulated whenever we have a change in position of the head. And the cristae will be stimulated whenever we have the change in direction and speed. So that's, you're going to say, in terms of balance, you're going to say, 
the maculae will burst or, or the change in position of the head will stimulate the maculae in the semicircular canals and then similarly the change in direction and speed of a of an organism will stimulate cristae of course in the semicircular canal now both maculae both maculae and the cristae they will convert the stimuli into nerve impulses once the stimuli has been converted into nerve impulses of course we're talking about here remember we have our perilymph in here once the stimuli has been converted into nerve impulses that it will have to be conveyed to the cerebellum via the auditory nerve Rauri. the nerve impulses will be conveyed from the semicircular canals to the cerebellum via the auditory nerve. Why the cerebellum? The cerebellum is the part of the uh, the brain which is responsible for restoring balance and equilibrium. And that um, the nerve impulses will be interpreted there. And once they are interpreted, the cerebellum will send back the nerve impulses to the uh, to the muscles so that they restore balance. So those are the whole processes of hearing and balance for hearing we make use of patuka and for balance we're going to make use of mp from bumalanga plus the cds to remind ourselves and now the maculae together with the cristae will stimulate um, or will convert the stimuli into nerve impulse thank you very much south africa for watching and please uh, do not forget to like comment share and also regalambana data it is possible, it is doable. Dango is thank you. Eh, Lindo Nitil and Lady Mark Ron. Oh, what? Appreciation, eh? Dango.